Well, hi everyone. I wanted to do an update to the Lake Livingston Dam and Reservoir story that I did a few days ago. Of course, today's July 9th, yesterday, July 8th, 2024, Hurricane Barrel moved through the Houston area and beyond and dumped quite a bit of rain. And uh, this was in the backdrop of the Trinity River Authority just completing some repairs that were needed to the spillway. And so it was a question of could they get those repairs completed before the storm came through and what additional impacts could the, the runoff from this storm have on Lake Livingston Dam and Spillway. So the storm dumped about five and a half inches of rain throughout the Harris County area, the Houston area. And it was in and out rather quickly, fortunately. This wasn't a Hurricane Harvey situation by any stretch. As a reminder, Livingston Dam is on the Trinity River and it's located approximately 70 miles north of the city of Houston. Initially, there were around 3 million people without power in the greater Houston area. As of this recording, it's 5.30 on July 9th. Uh, I understand that number's down to 1.6 million people, which is an awful lot of people considering how, how hot and humid it is down there. So hopefully they'll get power restored quickly. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, there were a series of emergency repairs to the spillway. And you see a photo, this was taken a day or two before Hurricane Barrel came through the area. Contractors actively restoring material, uh, large rocks, riprap, at, at the uh, stilling basin at the base of the spillway apron. All that material previously had been eroded out and moved downstream due to the heavy flows that occurred earlier this year through May. So the main activities that they did here recently was to replace this energy dissipating material, this riprap, and then also they pumped either concrete or grout at the base of the spillway apron uh, slab. So you can see that here in this photo. Now on July 3rd, I contacted the Trinity River Authority folks that were responsible for responding to questions from the public. And I got an indication that repairs were ongoing, but those repairs would include some coring and grouting operations. And it was the indication that there were some voids underneath the spillway slab or the, the apron, as they call it, downstream of the spillway gates that was caused by erosion and head cutting that undermined portions of the spillway slab. And today, July 9th, I called TRA representatives again to get some more details on this because some media outlets were reporting that repairs have been completed on July 7th, Sunday, the day before Hurricane Barrel moved through. And I thought, well, you know, I only see indications of riprap placement in the stilling basin and grouting in front of that spillway apron slab. I don't see any activity on the spillway itself in terms of drilling and grouting. I don't see much activity associated with uh, the spillway gates, there's two gates, gates seven and eight, that uh, are not operational at this time. And then this Click2 Houston, I think they've been getting the most detailed and accurate reporting uh, on this situation. They indicate that repairs will be completed towards the end of July this year. So today I asked the TRA representative specifically what repairs are still left to be done. And she clarified that the emergency repairs were completed on July 7th, but the final repairs were ongoing and she wouldn't give me a date. But as I saw from this Click2 Houston article, they indicate by the end of July. This just illustrates how difficult it's been to get timely information and specific information about what's going on with this situation. You know, the people I've talked with at the TRA were, were very polite, very professional. They just didn't have a lot of details. And not only that, I'm getting conflicting details from talking to different people at different times. So again, July 3rd versus July 9th. The other odd thing is as repairs were being wrapped up, the emergency repairs in preparation of barrel moving through, the Trinity River Authority got the FAA to put a flight restriction over the areas. No drones could fly over the work area or the dam and uh, I asked TRA representative why that was the case, and she indicated it was for the, the crew's safety. I guess they didn't want drones buzzing around, but you know, given the interest of 
the public in the status of these repairs and the progress, I, I think it's uh, quite interesting that they would have a, essentially a drone blackout in the lead up to the hurricane moving through. So what prompted these repairs? There were some inspections done because of the records amount of discharge going through this dam earlier this year in 2024. And they retained an engineer, they did some inspections. So on this May 20th, 2024 letter, there's reference to this consulting firm's submittal. They report an incident that began on March 30th, 2024, when they activated the emergency action plan due to high flow conditions through the spillway, which exceeded 20,000 cubic feet per second. So TRA provided an initial notification of the incident on March 30th, and then there was a subsequent inspection. So the consultant notified FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, that regulates this project because of the hydropower located here, that the emergency action plan activation on May 16th, 2024 was for a non-failure abnormal condition for partial failure of the left downstream training wall and erosion adjacent to the training wall. So this is the wall, if you look on the, in the downstream orientation on the left side, that wall that confines the flow in the spillway laterally became damaged and undermined. So as a result of this notification, they were supposed to start mobilizing additional resources, more equipment, stockpiling materials like riprap, so they could re be restored, indicates that the function of gate seven and eight should be restored as soon as possible, and then make modifications to the operation of the reservoir until permanent repairs are completed. That's the summary of that filing to FERC. Now, if you look at May 25th, 2024, so this was five days after the FERC filing, this is a press release from Trinity River Authority and I'll just read it verbatim here. Please be aware that there are no failures or problems at the Lake Livingston Dam. The dam is operating under normal operating procedures at this time. The dam is well maintained and is designed to pass more than 300,000 cubic feet per second of water. Well, that's not what the filing to FERC five days before said. So then we have a follow-up inspection from this engineering consultant because the water level at the base of the dam, what they call the tail water. So you have the water level in the reservoir, which is the headwater, and the water downstream, which is the tailwater elevation. Tail water was low enough that they could actually see damage underneath the spillway slab that had been undermined at the base of the spillway apron. So this triggered the alert from TRA on June 28th, two days after this FERC filing, that there were conditions that presented a potential failure condition at the project. So as a result of that discovery of additional damage, the plan was to lower the reservoir elevation to 128 feet. And of course, the recent rainfall has pushed the reservoir up above that elevation. But yeah, let's, let's read this press release on June 28th. So this is two days after the FERC filing indicating more extensive damage to the spillway. The Trinity River Authority is confirming that the spillway of the Lake Livingston Dam has been adversely impacted by the recent heavy rainfall and flooding in the dam's drainage area. This has resulted in the declaration of a potential failure watch condition, which requires continued monitoring and evaluation of the spillway's integrity, as well as the implementation of necessary repairs and remedial actions. Although there's no immediate danger of either failure or breach of the dam, the potential does exist however remote it might be. The day-to-day -day operation of the dam will continue as necessary, although normal gate operations may vary as conditions dictate. This declaration is in conformance with the Emergency Action Plan, the EAP, as approved by TRA. TRA will continue to monitor the spillway status and will issue updates as appropriate. So let's just take a look at what the reservoir el elevation's been here. It's reached a peak of 132.93 feet, and that was on June 15th, which was about a half a foot lower than the elevation that occurred during Hurricane Harvey. And you can see as of today, uh, reservoir elevation is around 131.5 feet. Now I have to correct something that I said in my initial video on this project, and that is flood control wasn't a primary objective of this dam. And as a viewer corrected me, there is some flood control benefit, although it's, it's rather small, but here uh, is a plot of the reservoir storage, and you can see the conservation pool, and then it's a little over 1.5 million acre feet, 
and in the red is additional storage, what they call the flood pool. So the amount of water that's stored above their conservation pool. So the top elevation of the spillway gates at Livingston Dam is 134 feet. So I'm gonna include links to these various websites. You can see the discharge through Livingston Dam is around 20,000 cubic feet per second. I also brought this flood map up. You can see Living city of Livingston is in, in red here and this gray area is the reservoir, Livingston Lake, and you can see the Trinity River down below. And the dark blue shading is three plus feet of flooding. So again, this was from 2017 from Hurricane Harvey. And then the maximum predicted flood elevations, you can see from this map, you can see most of the floodings uh, coastal and along the drainage ways, but again, three plus feet. The scale doesn't show what that was because it goes from 0.5 to one, essentially doubling three plus feet. So this could be in excess of five feet quite, quite readily in the dark blue areas, but that's for a one in 500 year flood event. So there's additional information that they wouldn't share with me. They being TRA over the phone, they said I had to submit a public records request, which I have. So I'll provide further updates. I'm digging in more into what the scenarios could look like if there was a significant problem at the dam in terms of downstream impacts. So stay tuned for that video. And if additional news comes out that's worthy of an update video, I'll do updates accordingly. So I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. I also would like to send a shout out to those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I've got various resources listed in the description of this video. Uh, one is my digital download for the biggest civil engineering disasters from the past 100 years. I also have a link summarizing the Artemis space program for NASA. And I have periodic updates to these downloads and I'll just continue to put them in the descriptions for these videos. So thanks for watching everyone.